Today's episode includes a full reading from Simple Abundance, a day book of comfort and joy by Sarah Von Bronick. I'll share my insight with you about a new ebb and flow I've been noticing in my own home. Stay tuned until the end when I do a full reading of Sarah's writing on May 2nd. Welcome to the Home with Intention podcast. I'm Jody Perry, your host. I support the do-it-yourself homeowners by delivering interior design services with empathy, intention, and simplicity at jodyperdesigns.com and by curating a collection of meaningful home products available at essentialpairings.com. My purpose with this show is to inspire you to create a home that is a reflection of you and what you value most in life. This podcast will support you in breaking through the limiting thoughts and fears that have been holding you back from creating a home that is uniquely you. There are no decorating rules or trends to follow here. Only inspiration, ideas, and encouragement to express your kind of beautiful, a home that captures the essence of your soul. It's time to create your home with intention. Hi everyone, I'm Jody Pear. Today I'm sharing another reading with you from Simple Abundance, a day book of comfort and joy by Sarah Von Bronick because her words are so meaningful and so inspiring. And I'm reading from May the 2nd because it helped me put into perspective what has been happening in my own home over this past year through this pandemic. Um, like many of you, we are working from home. And so I have my home office upstairs um, in what used to be a bedroom. And my husband is working from the kitchen table. So my days are filled with recording and writing. And so I am gathering inspiration from various resources, books, and various places. And so my office quickly feels out of control and messy and at times, just just at times, it does feel out of control. Um, And books and papers are, you know, piling up around me as I'm working through this and trying to organize my thoughts and create a plan. And then I walk downstairs and I see a similar situation where there are papers spread across the counters and the kitchen table. Um, But it's interesting. It's, you know, it's, it's a new ebb and flow that is happening in my home, just like so many of your homes, as we learn to um, work from home and do things that we've never done here before. Um, And I am now able to identify what appears to be chaos and clutter, I'm able to identify that now as a symbol of the amount of tasks and responsibilities that we have in our lives at any given time. Um, and I can, can relax knowing that these are temporary moments and somehow naturally we end up finding the time to get ourselves organized again and to clear that clutter and you know, have clear work surfaces again. It just, it just happens. So it's just this new um, ebb and flow. And I love that I can make this connection now and realize that it is just a symbol of what is happening inside of me, inside of my mind. Um, I don't believe that there is a single solution for any one of us because we all have very unique needs and um, tricks that work for us to help us feel better in our own spaces. Um, So maybe it's simply just a shift in awareness that is needed. And I hope that Sarah's words will help you make that shift just like they did for me. Um, So she suggests that our homes outwardly reflect the disarray of our minds. And I can take... um, solace, I guess, in that knowing that that is a a temporary situation. So yes, there's a lot happening in our lives and finding moments of reflection and connection, even amongst the chaos and amongst those busy times and amongst the clutter. I believe that that is what is most important. And for me, I have different areas throughout my home and, you know, one specific area 
um, is in the kitchen. I have a tiny little corner where I have a beautiful candle and a vase of fresh flowers and a beautiful picture. And as I am preparing dinner or getting my morning coffee, whatever it is, when I see that corner, even if it does start getting cluttered with other things, it's just like, like this little oasis over there. And it just reminds me to pause for a moment and to reflect and take a moment and remember, you know, what am I working on and what is most important to me and to realize that again, things will kind of settle down and life will feel calm and organized again. Um, and that what I'm seeing in my home is a reflection of what's happening inside of me. Um, so I hope Sarah's words are as insightful to you as they are to me. And stay tuned for a full reading from May 2nd. And I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you next time. Bye. Simple Abundance, A Day Book of Comfort and Joy by Sarah Bonbronick. May 2nd, Living in the House of Spirit. How to be happy when you are miserable. Plant Japanese poppies with cornflowers and mignonette and bed out the petunias among the sweet peas so that they shall scent each other. See the sweet peas coming up. Drink very good tea out of a thin Worcestershire cup of a color between apricot and pink. Rumor gotten. It was the small things that helped, taken one by one and savored, English writer Rumor Godden recalls in her mesmerizing memoir of an authentic life, a house with four rooms. Make yourself savor them, she told herself when life was not tidy. Life is not tidy around here today. Schedules are colliding, needs are conflicting, and the house is strewn with real life refuse, reflecting outwardly the disarray of my mind at this moment. My natural inclination, which I am thwarting with a tremendous act of will, is to start cleaning. But if I stop to clean, I'll interrupt the rhythm of the day. I really only have a few precious hours to work uninterrupted while my daughter is in school. A few precious hours to hold one thought in my head and follow it word by word to its completion, even if it takes all morning. One of the reasons I love Rumor Godden's writing is that she stitches the colorful threads of her extraordinary life, domestic, creative, and spiritual, with such deafness, the hem that seems to hold her life together rarely pulls or gapes the way mine does more often than I care to admit. She began her career in 1936 and in nearly 60 years has written 57 books, novels for both children and adults, nonfiction, short story collections, and poetry. Many of her renowned novels, which are very mystical, celebrate the fruitfulness of real life, the magic, the mystery, and the mundane. The New York Times noted that she was a writer who belongs in that small exclusive club of women. It includes Isaac Dennison and Beryl Markham, who could do pretty well anything they set their minds to, hunting tigers, bewitching men, throwing elegant dinner parties, winning literary fame. Of all her books, however, it is her memoirs that are my favorites. I am captivated by how she lived, nurtured a family, and created many homes out of shells of houses all over the world while writing almost continuously. She is a glorious storyteller, but no story is as riveting as real life. The soul craft of creating and sustaining safe havens set apart from the world in which to seek and savor small authentic joys is a recurring theme in her work, whether the haven is behind convent walls or in the nursery at the top of the stairs. Rumor Godden's secret to living an authentic life seems to, be ha seems to have been dwelling no matter where she actually kept house in the house of spirit. There is an Indian proverb or axiom that says that everyone is a house with four rooms, a physical, a mental, an emotional, and a spiritual. Most of us tend to live in one room most of the time, but unless we go into every room every day, even if only to keep it aired, we are not a complete person. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean the world to me if you could leave a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you listen on, because it helps me to grow this podcast and to reach more people. 
because the more people who choose their surroundings with intention, the more people can follow their heart back home to themselves, which is the mission for this podcast. Once a month, I will randomly select a reviewer and offer them a free download of my book, The Art of Decorating with Intention, a guidebook to creating an oasis for your soul. For more frequent insights and inspiration, you can follow me on Instagram at Jody Pear Designs. I have been fortunate enough to find the most helpful resources and amazing people whose work has touched me and inspired me to show up here today. TheHouseCoachingInstitute.com Kathy Heller's inspiring podcast, Don't Keep Your Day Job. Allison Barker's work and her new podcast, Your Soulful Brand. The Sherry and Nancy Show, a podcast for women in their 50s that is hilarious and deeply inspiring. And Sandy Monroe. She is a joyful life lived on Instagram and her brilliant teachings and guidance are exactly what I need. I'm so grateful to have found each one of you along the path towards fulfilling my dreams. I'll see you in the next episode of Home With Intention.